Welcome back to the Simple Cyber Defense. In this video, we're going to be talking about how to secure Ubuntu operating system. So let's begin. So Ubuntu claims, or Canonical, the company that creates Ubuntu, claims that Ubuntu is secure out of the box and that it has been heavily tested to ensure that the operating system is as secure as possible. But there are a few tweaks, things that you can do to make it even more secure. The first thing that we can do is to ensure that automatic updates are up, are up and running. This will ensure that every time there's a security update that your operating system will get it right away. The next thing to do is to make sure that you're using strong passwords. I suggest using a password manager for generating these passwords so that you don't have to to guess what passwords are good or not and also you won't have to remember these these secure strong passwords the password manager will remember them for you mm. the next thing to do is to install a what's known as a firewall this will help prevent things from randomly installing itself onto your system. Most of these things on this page are used for advanced users. So the things that you'd want to to focus on if you don't want to get into the nitty gritties are the security updates, the passwords, the firewalls, and the antivirus if you so choose to. Linux operating system is really good at not having viruses but if you want additional protection you could install an antivirus. These three are what's recommended by Ubuntu. So let's get into talking about some of the things you need to add into Ubuntu. So the first thing you want to do is get into the Ubuntu Software Center and then go into the search and you want to search for firewall. There are many lists of different firewall configurations as you can see, but the one mostly good for users that are starting off is to use the what's known as the firewall configuration. So you just want to install, put in your password. And just have it install. It should be a quick install since it's a little small program. Okay. And then we'll just go into here and go down to firewall, open it up, use your password again, then you're greeted to this thing here. See right now it's not running, so and then it'll just give you all the different basic configurations that you want to go through. For most users you just want to just start it up and then if you want to add particular different rules that's you can just add them in there. So it might be simple, more advanced things. This will allow you to limit or reject or allow different traffic coming through for different applications. 
So say you are very particular about certain things being run onto your system, you can go through here and either allow or deny different things. So that will give you a greater control of what traffic will go through your system so that you don't have any surprises. Okay. So the next thing you would want to do is to go into your settings. And go down to notifications and you want to make sure that desktop sharing all of these are on so that this will alert you anytime someone is trying to log into your desk or into your operating system and control it because there are many times that hackers will try to use remote desktop softwares to secretly go through the back doors of your system and take control of it when you're not using it. This will give you an alert every time this happens so that you don't have any surprises coming through. Next thing you'd want to go down to is applications and then you want to scroll down to the software and updates. Here you want to put the notification, make sure the notifications are on. This will tell you every time there are updates for your operating system. That way you know exactly when to update your system. And then the last thing to do in the settings is go down to privacy. I would recommend turning off the con connectivity checking because this could be used to gather information on your computer which you may not want to share with Canonical. The next thing you want to do is just totally disable location services altogether. There's very few reasons for that to actually be used. If you do find this feature needed then you can always just come back here and just turn it back on and the last thing to do is go through this section and if you want to have a file history which basically will have a list of all the things that you've opened up or all the files and folders that you opened you can keep it on otherwise you can just turn it off or if you want to keep it on you can limit how many days that file history can be used and the next thing you want to do is to automatically delete temporary files and then you can choose how long you want to keep those temporary files and also delete any trash that you have in your trash bin so that you don't have a whole bunch of files and garbage in your trash bin and again you can choose how frequently you want those dumped out and then here you can just automatically delete right now if you want to I recommend going through this automatic process so that you don't have to think about it, it just automatically just wipes it out gets rid of it So these are the list of the basic things to do. So you can go more into depth with it. If you're an advanced user and understand exactly what you're doing, you can go to this website and download a list of things that you can do to secure your Ubuntu system much further than the most average person would want to. After you go to this website, you can download their ben benchmark, which is free. All you have to do is just give them an email address and they'll email you this PDF, which will go through different lists of things that you can do to 
completely harden your system so that it's much more secure than than what is given to you by default. It gives you all these different commands that you can throw into the terminal. It's a step by step, very advanced, detailed things. Now those are the benefits of the Linux operating system. But with Ubuntu especially there are some drawbacks and some concerns. There because Canonical is a corporation, they do have to make money off of this sometime, somehow. Mostly they get their money from Ubuntu through the uh, subscriptions to technical support. But they also do other things to make money. And a lot of a lot of people aren't very too happy with this because it is an invasion of your privacy. Is this something to be aware of? if you are comfortable with the canonical collecting some information and selling it just like Google or Amazon or Apple does? You could use it. If you're not comfortable with it, there are some things you could do to limit what they collect on you. One of those things is to completely turn off all reporting. To do that you just open up your terminal and run this little command so that every time Ubuntu tries to submit a crash report or something it cannot go through. And the next thing to do is to open up this file and then set it to zero. This will basically remove the ads service services from Ubuntu. Again, these are more advanced things. If you feel comfortable with going through the terminal, you can go through these steps and completely make your system a little bit more private too. But if you're not comfortable with all of these, the last option and the easiest option is to just not install Ubuntu and go with the, the Debian operating system. Now Debian is is the operating system that Ubuntu is based off of, which means that both of these operating systems are very identical in the way they operate and function. The only difference is Ubuntu took Debian and made some modifications and add-ons to make it to make it more up to date. Ubuntu is more about giving the users a easy out of the box more up to date product whereas Debian is more based on the stability and openness. Ubuntu does have some proprietary uh, software that they do use where Debian uses 100% free and open soft, soft, free and open source software and it does not have any known uh, spyware on it unless you specifically add in a software that will spy, spy on you. So the choices are yours. If you go through all these steps you can make your Ubuntu more secure or if you aren't comfortable with a lot of their spying on you you could go more the rock for Debian and this concludes this video and we'll see you in the next one. If you like what was in this episode, please consider liking, subscribing, and sharing with others. For more information, to suggest a topic, or to donate, head over to simplecyberdefense.com.